What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to simplify using the order of operations a rational expression. Now, a problem like this is not one that we usually kind of use um, when we're teaching order of operations, right? A lot of times when we think of order of operations, we're thinking about multiplying, dividing, addition, and subtraction, you know, throwing an exponent, throwing some parentheses, and that's kind of it. But the rational expression one is actually something really, really important because while sometimes we write it, or sometimes you'll see it like this, another way that you might see it is actually using the division symbol. So if you do get a problem that looks, that's like in this format, this is the exact same way to write it like this. Now, typically in my experience, I prefer to avoid using the division symbol, right? I want to use the division bar. That's gonna help me understand things better when I'm trying to simplify the problem using order of operations. But guess what? Sometimes on a test or on your homework or in the textbook, they'll get the problem like this. And they can do it for a couple of reasons. One, so you can take it mentally and from this form and put it into that form. And then maybe also maybe one that's like not malicious like that. Maybe it's just they want to save some space, fit more problems, you know, on a sheet of paper. But I don't like writing this way. I don't like using the division symbol. I like to use the division bar. Now, everything is exactly the same. There's one thing though that has been changed. Actually, I should probably improve this better. Two things that have been changed, okay? Because actually, if you're going to write this out properly, you don't want to do this as a three divided by it. Um, you actually, if you're going to write this down properly, there's two things I had to add, right? I had to add a set of parentheses here and here. And the reason why this is so important is because this is kind of like secret grouping symbol that a lot of times we don't really talk about. Actually, let me write it like this. It's a secret grouping symbol we don't really talk about. This represents your denominator. This represents your numerator. Okay? So remember, when we're talking about grouping symbols, all students like recognize, oh, parentheses like work from the innermost in and then like, you know, keep on simplifying to get rid of your parentheses, right? And that's great. And a lot of students remember that. And for a problem like this, like that actually would be something that you could probably just easily do, right? It's not literally that much more difficult. But a lot of times when students look at this in the rational form, they kind of forget, like they just want to go, oh, I need to do multiplication, right? And then I need to divide. You know, I need to multiply and then divide things here. And no, 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 we don't want to do that. What you need to understand here is that these grouping symbols are still applied down here as well as over here. So what that means is I want you to simplify your numerator first and your denominator first. You can do them at the same time. They're not gonna interact with each other, but you're simplifying them first and then you go through and apply your exponents, your multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify now my numerator, my denominator. Um, in this case, in the numerator, you can see there's the, we only have one set of parentheses, but you can't simplify anything in the parentheses. So then I can move exactly now to multiplication. You could see I have a seven times three, which is a 21. Now again, I'm just gonna do one operation for each one. So that'd be a 21 plus three. And again, I'm putting these parentheses so you can see that I'm kind of grouping that term first. That's gonna be divided by, now in this case, I do have actually an operation inside my parentheses. That's gonna be a three minus one, which is gonna be a two. Again, I know I can multiply it guys, but I wanna go through this nice and slow for this. So that's gonna be a four times a two. And again, remember, we still have a six. Okay, so now what we simply need to do is say, all right, well, now I can simplify this further simplified. You can put that in parentheses as well. You don't really need to though. Four times two is just going to be an eight, but 21 plus three is going to be a 24. Four times two, I'm sorry, it's going to be an eight and plus six. And you might've said like, oh crap, you know, how do I add like fractions, like denominators? Well, again, remember like, thankfully, eight evenly divides into 24, right? So I can apply my division here before even applying my application. It's kind of already represented in ahead of me. I don't have to make that um, mistake here if it was like 24 divided by eight plus six. Sometimes students will add the eight plus six first, right? Because they just think of addition anyways, even though it's after division. But, um, but here it's kind of written nicely in that format. So 24 divided by eight is going to be a three. Three plus eight is going to be a nine. So in this problem, I created some parentheses to help me understand what I needed to do. But in the next video, I'm gonna have a problem that's gonna look like this, which is gonna have way too many parentheses.